Hey guys, this video is brought to you by World of Warships. It's a free-to-play PC game, and it offers the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels, including the USS Indianapolis, and you can unlock ships and dominate the ocean. You can even invite your friends to join you and receive unique items and cashback bonuses. If you guys check out that promo code at the bottom of the screen, Battle Stations 2020, you can get 250 doubloons, three days premium account, a million credits, and one premium ship, which is the USS Charleston, plus you get one port slot. This game has great reviews from multiple sources. Be sure to click on the link in the description tab below to start playing today. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some general tips and advice for saving time when learning how to code. And I would say that, you know, a lot of this is just off the top of my head. And it's me looking back at a 10 year career and like where I've actually wasted uh, so much time and kind of gives me an uneasy feeling sometimes because I never really know if I like truly wasted the time or was it like helping me get to where I'm at. I mean, ultimately, even if you're sort of wasting time learning how to code, you know, doing this or that uh, or being guilty of any of the mistakes that I mentioned in here, I think that you're still learning. It's just everybody's learning progress is different and you know I think in hindsight it's always 2020 meaning you look back and you're like oh I could have done this and this differently and I really didn't need to learn that and I spent a lot of time on that and it's probably natural and normal but hopefully this guy this can help some of you all right so the first tip is going to be have a proper debugging environment set up there are so many tools these days that I don't think a lot of programmers are tapping into and after you've been in this game for a little bit, and including like for me when I was first jumping in this, we didn't have the like very good editors. Like we had Eclipse, and it seemed like Visual Studio, the uh, you know the full fledged IDE, but we didn't really have like Visual Studio Code. And it seems like we definitely didn't have the browsers that could debug as well as they can uh, these days. Now in this particular case, like you want to make sure that you can actually debug your code. So here is some JavaScript code. And it's just simply a function that you're calling an event, a listener is being attached to the button. But you wanna be able to place a breakpoint in your code anywhere that you're writing it, no matter how simplistic, you want that type of basic functionality working first. And here you can see I, I did, uh, I'm hitting the breakpoint in the browser. So learning how to do that with JavaScript and Chrome or Firefox or whatever you're gonna be using, that stuff's imperative. And even if you're using Python with like Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code, like they have debuggers and everything for pretty much every language out there. So make sure you guys are able to hit a breakpoint because if you can't hit a breakpoint in your code base, then there's something like you just need to stop what you're doing and make sure you have that basic environment up and, and running because you're going to learn a lot by being able to stop your code mid-execution. All right, now reaching out for help it can save you a ton of time. There's a lot of times you're going to be coding and you're going to be stuck on something. And sometimes it, it could be like the most basic thing in the world or maybe your, your stuff is so over-architected and a complete mess, like who knows. But getting that feedback when you're stuck on something, as long as you've tried to figure it out, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to the available avenues that, are, that is available to you, which includes like Stack Overflow or GitHub or a YouTube channel. Uh, any of those places, you need to go ahead and try to reach out as soon as possible when you're stuck because then you're going to start getting frustrated and you're going to waste time not being at 100% when you feel like you've run up against that brick wall. And a lot of times it is some basic level stuff that you need to ask and somebody could quickly point out what the problem is. So if that can save you a ton of time, definitely do that. And also know that even senior developers sometimes can't see the obvious. They're tired. They've been coding all day. There's nothing better than, than getting another pair of eyes on the problem and you'd be surprised how often, even if it's like a junior dev or somebody who doesn't even have the overall skills that you do, they could be lesser, they could be higher. Um, they can still point out the obvious when you're missing it sometimes. And uh, that's why these websites are good. Now, another thing too, is when you're, when you're phrasing a question, that sometimes allows you to solve the problem yourself because you'll find as you start asking the questions and digesting what you've tried and what you've done, then you start to realize, oh, I didn't do this or that. There's another technique in programming called uh, rubber duck debugging, where like if you don't have anybody to talk to, I've actually done this. I don't really talk to myself at a, at a desk, but like I'll sit there and have conversations in my head like, hmm, okay, so I've tried this and that, and 
And I know sometimes I'll be jotting things down on pen, pencil and paper. It just depends on how you want to work. Um, but essentially what you do is you put your duck on your laptop or whatever next to your, your monitor and you start talking to that duck and you, you start explaining, you know, what the problem is and what you've tried and things like that. So kind of in the same sense of asking the question on these uh, programming websites, it sort of gets you at the answer quicker. So you guys want to have a plan when you start coding something. I've been guilty so many times, and even now sometimes I think something's going to be straightforward and I'll just start coding something out. And I find myself wasting a lot of time having to rewrite architecture and sometimes scrapping the entire thing and going about it a different way because I never really planned out what I was trying to accomplish. And you can do that literally with what's called pseudocode, which is just fake code. You could use UML diagrams. This is like a UML uh, diagram right here. Um, you don't have to be this sophisticated, but this is obviously ma mapping out like database stuff and how it's all connected in a relational database. This is clearly overkill for a lot of uh, beginner users and things. I don't know why it gave me all this stuff uh, out of the gate, but let's just do new. I'm going to do blank. Anyway, you have all kinds of different tools at your disposal. So even if it's just like, okay, I need, I need um, my front page. Like, what does it do? Okay, so I can have a, a, a profile page that links to that, right? And then uh, you could have a news page, like whatever it is, like start mapping out what it is that you're trying to build. And then that way you start to know like, okay, when I have a front page, I obviously have some HTML. It's going to be pointing in my profile and my news. Start getting into the profile. You start to realize, you know, what, what sort of data do I need in my profile? Um, and just anyway, you don't have to use this software. Microsoft Visio is popular in the corporate world, but just having something, even on a you know pencil and paper, I actually write a lot of my wireframe uh, like prototype type things and just using um, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. All right, the next thing is don't over-architect your project because what we want to do is we want to keep the scope of our project small so that we can actually get it done. And then you can do iterative improvements on that. But having at least something that you've completed, even if it's basic technology, it makes you so much, it makes you feel so much better then trying to over-architect something to the point where you can't figure it out, you're never going to get it done, and then you scrap the project, you feel like it's a huge waste of time. I've done that so many times. And a good example of that is like everybody thinks that they need React for everything. And the thing is, is like you really don't need React. You can actually still just use jQuery if you want or vanilla JavaScript or even something even older if you're already familiar with it. But um, there's so many different developers out there that are using React just for basic apps, and then they're like, oh, I, now I need, I need server-side rendering, so they use Next.js. And I recommend both these products depending on what it is you're trying to do. But the thing is, is like for people that are just learning how to code, like if you're not really good with HTML, CSS, and just plain JavaScript yet, you probably shouldn't be jumping into React or Next.js or any of that stuff. you got quite a bit of knowledge that you need to build up to even get to that point. Um, so I've definitely been guilty of jumping into projects that – are just way over my head um, for the time that I'm trying them out. All right, the next thing is going to be don't stop what you're doing to jump on the latest hotness or fad. This is a project which could be great. I don't know. I want to try it out myself, but it's simply going to be for learning when I have time. I would never stop what I'm doing on my project that's using like React or even another project I have that's using uh, lit HTML. I'm not going to drop what I'm doing on those projects and jump over to Alpine. Even though it might be great, it's probably easy to use. Who knows? It's still an entirely new way of coding. It's an entirely new library. And we waste a lot of time by not getting good enough with our previous libraries by finishing projects and, and seeing things through before we're jumping on to the latest new thing. So even though JavaScript changes with the wind and, and it's hard to keep up, like you're not that far behind by not jumping on the latest project. For the most part, people aren't doing fantastic things uh, with these tool sets. And until they start doing that and you actually can prove uh, or at least have some sort of proof that it's definitely going to be a time saver. Like for instance, React. React is definitely better for very complicated front-end applications that have a lot of state ma maintenance, uh, a lot of DOM manipulation and and updates and things like that. So. Um, you know, that solves a specific problem. Now, is this going to be the same thing? This is kind of like a dragon type of thing. So like right out of the gate, I'm like, well, how is this different from uh, lit HTML, which is, 
uh, project from Google. And, you know, and really it's probably not, but I don't know that for sure. But either way, I have to kind of jump into it to, to know. And that time is simply going to be wasted for somebody like me in most cases. And probably you guys as well, if you're going to stop what it is that you're doing and uh, derail your learning on whatever it is that you're currently using to jump onto this latest new hot thing. The other day, I, uh, I ran across this uh, website. I, I thought it was pretty fantastic, the UI to it. Now, uh, it turns out a lot of people, I think, really hate it because it's like it's very it's too interactive. There's too much stuff going on with the page and you have to scroll in order to see uh, the, you know, the, the, the story as it, go, it goes along. So I think like clearly this is uh, it, to me, it's really, really cool. But how did they do this? Did they use React? Did they use Vue? Did they use Angular to do all this stuff? No, nah, this stuff is using old school required JS and jQuery, and that's it. And it's pretty cool. Like, it works pretty fluid. Um, like I said, it's probably overkill in a lot of a lot of ways, but uh, you, you could run out of Like, you definitely have to do a lot of scrolling to see the entire thing. But my point is, though, is that, um, you know, the people didn't have to stop what they were doing when they were building this to jump over to React or even to Alpine or, or any of this stuff. So uh, make sure you guys are seeing your projects through. All right, guys, lastly is uh, don't make emotional decisions. And this goes in more ways than one. I spent a lot of time working on failed business ideas that were never going to work because I was emotional about the attachment that I had to the work that I had already done. Um, there, like life is a business decision in many cases, like you have to value your time. And when your time is being wasted on something that you discover is, is just never going to work, the sooner you cut your losses, the better. Also in that same sense though, there's been many times I've been upset because like my code's not compiling. I can't figure out something. I feel like I'm writing the thing the entire wrong way. And I end up like deleting all the code without version control. I've done that before. And like redoing it all, you know, and like and then basically not even finishing it to the point where like I would end up going back to the original design and the, orig the original spec. And had I just stepped away for a moment and, you know, just taken my time and, and caught my breath and recharged my batteries, come back and look at it, I would have probably stuck with the original architecture, maybe made some minor tweaks here and there. So I just think that Anytime we're making a decision on like whether or not you're supposed to quit your job, any you know big decision like that, you know whether or not to stop your business, start a business, um, those things you, you need to make sure you're in the right frame of mind. And the same thing can be said for your code. So before you go and destroy all your code because you're pissed off, like I would probably step away for a little bit, come back at it, and if you find that it's the right decision at that point, uh, go with it. But until you actually know for sure, I definitely just wouldn't make an emotional decision. All right, guys, that's my list here. So uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support. You guys all take care and have a good night. Bye.